imagining of a medieval weapon, I would say. Come on then, KJ, do tell. How big is yours? Now, welcome to another installment of Number One Crude Mistakes, a podcast by Glenn from Number One Projects, KJ from Crude But Efficient, and myself, Havard, from uh, Behind the Mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Even managed to botch my own name. That's perfect. <laughs> you, you did it flawlessly on ours, and then you, you didn't remember your own handle. Um, that's, that's really nice. Priceless. <laughs> Hi, guys. How are we doing? Uh, Great, great. It seems like just yesterday we talked. Yeah, but it was the day before. It was <laughs> the day did, before. Kinda, yeah. So, you know, while we're on the subject of that, how did you find being on Maker's Waffle? <laughs> <laughs> Man, the silence was deafening. Yeah. Oh, it was really nice. Um, it's really fun getting to know new people uh, within the community. And, of course, it took a turn for... What was it? Languages and demographics, but uh, yeah, it was really fun. And Vikings. And Vikings, yeah, of course. You absolutely. can't have a podcast with 40% Vikings without that being a theme, I guess. And I think that's a, it's a thing for, for the British as well to, to be very aware of their, um, of their the part of Viking heritage that they have. I mean, for some people, it's very important that them that, well, I'm one eighth Nordic <laughs> or something like that, and then they go full on in. There are a lot of English that are guilty of that, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, that's the yeah. that's the same phenomenon you have in the Midwest in the states, where if they have a Norwegian relative far way back, they are more Norwegian than I ever will be. So it's, uh... <laughs> yeah, uh, probably something like that. Well, I think um, Andy Pugh and Jamie Reader both have got some sort of Viking in them because the stamina those guys have to do that late night recording every week is unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, give, given the track record, uh, not of those two, of course, but uh, <laughs> like historically, uh, I think we were kind of active enough that our genes are <laughs> very dominant in, <laughs> in the Greater Britain. <laughs> But yeah, it was uh, it was really nice being on there, the second time for me, and it was it was nice to have have some friends with me, uh, so yeah. that you actually could uh, sneak away if you needed to. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. you, you had a washing machine uh, running wild. <laughs> I had a, yeah, uh, a I had a toilet that I knew that oh no, this is gonna start screaming any any minute now. <laughs> I have to do go whack it a bit. So at the end, when you left us, left us suddenly, Havard, was it? Um, was that just some excuse that you made up? The baby's crying, or was that genuine? Yeah, I just kicked the baby <laughs> call, and then I used it as an excuse. <clears throat> <laughs> but I'm, I'm feeling that's a part of being a noob, um, like the washing machine incident. Um, of course, I didn't heat this room tonight, so I had a heater on frantically under the desk now before we hit record, and I can still hear the freezer behind me humming. Um, the microphone picks it up, so should probably do something with the setup and well, isolation of the room and some improvements, but then again. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm definitely I not in the ideal setting for recording the podcast. I mean, I'm in the workshop. If it rains heavily, there's a flat roof above me. We're never going to be able to record. It's going to be far too noisy. <laughs> well, I have my uh, desktop computer like half a meter away from the microphone, so that's not really ideal either. It's nice to see you guys when we're talking, even though it's an audio podcast. But when I'm speaking on the phone with someone, I just prefer being outside walking. So that would be the ideal situation for me just to bring my phone and go for a walk for an hour, but I couldn't see you. So we, we wouldn't have the same interaction. <laughs> it would, certainly wouldn't work for me tonight. It's far too windy. I wouldn't be able to hear a thing. Yeah, it's that as well. And yeah. you have to have a good connection also. 
so yeah, it's been a week with a lot of <clears throat> with a lot of podcasts, our own, and of course being guests. But how about project wise? Has anyone got anything done? Not for the YouTube, definitely not for the YouTube. <laughs> but I've knocked the shit out of my utility room. And then started to put it back together now. Just got in, getting some insulation in there today, and hopefully get it all plastered and uh, ready for paint by the end of the weekend. Hopefully, mm. that's moving quickly. It's, it is a small room. <laughs> yeah, but still, I mean, there. <laughs> I feel like the size of the room for for that thing isn't. It doesn't uh, do that much for the time because the bigger the room is just mostly large large surfaces that go really quickly and then you come to a corner and then it goes to a standstill yeah, and true true yeah. <laughs> but I mean it, it could be like a origami room folded up with five corners in different directions I don't know about that so yeah the, the, there are definitely a few corners to uh get around in this room it, it is small but it yeah it does go off in different directions so that may slow things down but it's the second time i've had to do this room so hopefully this one will be the last <laughs> <laughs> yeah right <laughs> we, we, we had we had, leak, we had leak issues before that's that's the reason it needs redoing ah yeah yeah, yeah. then it goes to the top of the list of, of course Absolutely. but i mean it's just, just a matter of time i mean it's the only room you have to do in the next five years or yeah. next ten years, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, I'm, um, I mean, after this one, I've got to move straight onto uh, a downstairs toilet and then my office. So, yeah, it's it's going to be house projects for at least the next month or so. I'm amazed by you saying a month or so. I we have our main <laughs> hallway. It's a very small hallway. It's a sixties house and. I think it's six months ago since I just removed the old tapestry and that's how far I've got. I need to buy a door <laughs> and uh, some paint, but it's really hard to find the motivation to do those jobs. And now we are venturing into the autumn, which is, it's dark by the time you get home and when you get the kids to sleep. I really can't muster any motivation to start doing that kind of work. It's too noisy as well when you've got kids in the house, isn't it? You have to stop and let the kids sleep. Yeah, that as well. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think that perhaps it's the, the age of our children that plays a huge role in yeah. how much how much stuff we get done. But the other problem is it's in the summertime when it's perfect, for doing that job because you can have the doors open and you can put up some masking wall to keep the dust from going into your house and so on and i want to do other things because the summers are short and when it's nice weather i want to do other things <laughs> having a beer and a bath and yeah <laughs> so uh, what about you guys are you, are you working on anything at the moment are you managed to get anything done since we last spoke yeah actually um I felt, well, this shouldn't be surprising, but actually talking about a project actually made me do something about it. Um, those uh, uh, laughing gas canisters I was talking about last time. Yeah. This is what I, I meant. Okay. I, so this is, uh, how long is this? It's like about a two liter canister, does it? Um, no. That's a good question. Uh, oh, it's a one liter canister, one liter. actually. There we go. Actually, so it's about thirty centimeters long, and and for you listeners out there who actually don't see the video, KJ is now holding up uh, well, like a Pringle can size uh, metal tube. With with uh, helium gas. Uh, laughing gas. Laughing gas, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, no, that's not helium. No, okay. Uh, so it's nitrous, uh, isn't it? Yeah. Cream charger, uh, not for medical re use. Do not refill. Um, so this, uh, I cut it up. 
So that's cut off what the you're ends gonna do. Yeah. Of it. Uh, so this actually was. Uh, there's the camera. Uh, like three millimeter thick steel it's made out of, yeah. which was a lot more than I thought it would be. So I mean, uh, just cutting off the ends like this, and I have a pretty nice piece of pipe if I need it as well. <laughs> so these are my thought is to to weld them together to something like this to get a roughly ball shaped thing. Um, and... All this visual stuff's working so well for the audience, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah but... but I got inspired now because I am just recently had a thought about doing a upgraded power version of the Super Soaker that I uh, wanted okay. when I was a kid but never got. Uh, now I have a portable compressor, uh, yeah. which is battery operated, so I need a couple of canisters to keep water and... <laughs> high air pressure and I could yeah. do some proper water damage to the summer. <laughs> <laughs> so just going back to KJ, I'm intrigued KJ, what what is the ultimate goal for welding these two ends of this can together? Well the the goal is to to create a, a kind of a something ball shaped and then attach uh, some kind of yeah attach attach a chain to it and then see what you can do with that, more or less. <laughs> it's, it's a medieval weapon, isn't it? Uh, it's a modern reimagining of a medieval weapon, I would say. Okay. Yeah. So we're, again, we've just come round onto how KJ likes to kill people. This is more maiming, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Heavy how good your aim is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if we take my aim into consideration, it's it's dangerous mostly for myself, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so this might be a two-person podcast soon. Who knows? <laughs> Fabulous. Uh, what about you, Havard? Well, up until today, I actually had a quite productive week. Um I, as I might have mentioned earlier, the upgraded Hellcorder, um, for those of you who don't know what that is, that's a recorder-based guitar amplifier I built, which I'm now redoing in a more advanced, better way, um, putting better in quotation marks very much here. But um, So I've really gotten along with that project and then of course uh, as KJ uh, I think it was the last episode we did when we talked how we really dislike teak and still having teak in our workshop then a friend of mine just hit me up and said well you can make something for me out of teak and that sparked an idea so I'm doing a side quest for a uh, okay. Christmas gift but I I can't really show any details because... Is it going to be some sort of nice ornament, do you think? or? Well, we'll see. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll post a video on it when it's ready, but I, I can't really drop anything okay. while I'm building it uh, on Instagram because that will give away the, the punchline, so to speak. There is a comedic uh, aspect of it. Very good. I look forward to that one. Interesting, um, just a question for you is... When you were building the first helicorder, were you already imagining how you could build it better? No. Um, no. <clears throat> it's been a long project. Um, I don't remember when it started, but it was while my father was still alive. Uh, and when I studied at university, I used to go home on the weekends and we would have a glass of whiskey into the late hours solving worldly problems <laughs> and I don't remember why I had the idea but at some point I said it would be cool to have uh, a recorder based guitar amplifier now that's an outrageous idea <laughs> by itself I find myself saying that so often yeah with my friends <laughs> and I think he at that time knew me better than I did myself because if he just have said oh that was a cool idea then we would jump on to the next 
ludicrous idea, and I would forget about it. But I remember him saying, I don't think you can do that. And, <laughs> and you can't say that to me. So I instantly went and bought recorders. And this was way before you had Arduino or anything. So I started building it with the pipes and everything. And I realized my, my main issue would be the interface between the guitar and the valves. And then, of course, I didn't want to spend years in programming something for myself. So, and of course, I was studying at the time and then I got a job and then things kind of happened. So it was just sitting there. Um, and then this guy came up with the MIDI widget, which basically solved all the problems I had at that time. Well, all Hellcorder related problems. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Then I got another boost, uh, and then I also got a guitar with a Roland pickup system, which also spoke in MIDI. So it was really, I had the complete package. So now it was just building it. But still, the design brief was I wanted to take any guitar and plug it in. I don't want to need to have a guitar with an expensive microphone set up to do MIDI. Uh, and then Arduino came and a lot of people just gather around online communities. So suddenly I also got um, like this uh, PCB board that actually does uh, audio signal to MIDI conversion. And that really sparked the last leg. And that, of course, coincided with us buying a house. So I also got my own workshop. I wasn't reliant on working an hour here and there while visiting my dad's workshop. And, but of course, up until that point, I didn't even know that YouTube existed. So I just had a video clip here and there, and it was most like showing that the concept works. So it's been sitting in my workshop for years, taunting me. So I just got tired of it and I thought I just finish it. And of course, then I've done a couple of videos on YouTube. So I just put together what I have and just upload it and be done with it. And after a couple of days, it really just took off. <laughs> <laughs> and I got so much really good feedback. I mean, people are so on board with the hilarity of the entire thing. And people are chipping in with like... Uh, everything from ideas to volunteering, doing the programming bit. And people are saying, if you want to upgrade the pay pipes, I can chip in money and so on. So there is actually a small community out there who is really invested in anything that's related <laughs> to the hell quarter. <laughs> so that kind of boosted my spirit. So I thought at some point, fuck it. I should, need, I should build a 2.0 and I also got a CNC now so I can machine the parts faster and better and i have all the parts basically except the ones i'm now planning on swapping out so it should be a quicker build this time and uh the last couple of weeks i've gotten a really good progress going fantastic no, so, it is a really cool project yeah definitely i mean it's a, it's so so simple and yet so extremely complicated <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a uh... It's over over engineering something really dumb. Yeah, but still, you can't really under engineer it and get something that works. I mean, if you did fifty percent of the job, you did you wouldn't get fifty percent of the result. You would get like ten percent, perhaps. Yeah. So you had to have to have some sort of level of over engineering to actually get something out of it. But. I don't dare to go there, but I think that's an exponential graph because if Probably, I try yes. to, if I try to imagine what if I want to bring it to ninety five percent, like making it actually a decent playable instrument, I don't want to think how much effort and money you need to put in <laughs> no. to actually get to that level. That I think is astronomical. You yeah, just... I think you you have to 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 gaze into the future and see. Okay, where does the graph yeah. Uh, what's it called? When do, does it balance out? So do you, should you aim for 70%, it... 80%, 85% perhaps, and it's, it's not worth putting in the f extra effort? I think the cutoff comes kind of early because what really made it resonate with people is the fact that you're using recorders. 
Uh, I thought this was maybe a Norwegian or a Scandinavian phenomenon, but because of schools are underfunded and recorders are easy to learn and play by notes. So it's the chosen weapon of <laughs> destruction <laughs> in school, so to speak. So everybody, it seems like worldwide, have a relationship with the recorder in a school setting. And of course, it is a proper instrument if you know how to play it, but nobody has ever gotten to that level, most of us. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody have that uh, recognition, but also that horror that follows along with it that makes it really interesting for them. So I think if I if I pass that barrier that it started to sounding nice and you lost that hilarity of it, people would lose interest because then you're just someone chasing the perfection to getting a playable instrument and that's not what people want to see do you think that um, the helicord has paid for itself with um, what you've got back in youtube revenue (laughs) 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 i mean obviously Uh, labor aside and not by a fat chance Um, (laughs) i mean as I said in the video, one recorder is cheap, one relay is cheap, uh, but if you times everything by 25, then it becomes 25 times not cheap, <laughs> to, say, <laughs> to say the least. And uh, yeah, I haven't counted the hours because it's it's my hobby, it's uh, my time of yeah leisurely joys, if you can... Uh, call it that but uh no i spent way too much money and although that was the video that tipped me over um the threshold to joining the youtube partner program um there is really not much money there for the subscriber base that i have so um i might have paid for a lunch uh, and uh, a can of paint that's it basically <laughs> well paint bar is rather expensive at the moment so <laughs> yeah uh, of course it's uh i'm not skimping out on paint so it's the high quality stuff of course <laughs> <laughs> i even went out of my way to not using red so i think i shows i'm putting in an effort <laughs> <laughs> so you spoke about the uh the cnc that's a tool I'd quite like in the future. Definitely. I got the I got a laser this year, which I, I think is a fantastic bit of kit. Yeah. For adding a little extra dimension to things. But I'd really quite like a CNC. Is there anything that you guys have got on the wish list tool wise? Well, since I don't have any kind of robots in my workshop, any of those would be nice, I guess. <laughs> I I was or I shouldn't say I was. I am looking into getting a laser at some point. Yeah. But then doing small production run of Christmas ornament and something uh, just based on a loose idea that I might even make some money making stuff. And why, the CNC... why would you want to do that? <laughs> Who knows? I mean, <laughs> I, I, just like have, I have crazy ideas things. sometimes, and that's maybe <laughs> one of them. <laughs> What sort of laser do you think you'd go for? There's um, a guy I follow. I'm probably I'm sure you've heard of him, the Manga Suslerin. Yeah. And he's he's got this laser, and it seems to be military grade. What takes my laser three minutes to cut, he can do in three seconds. I mean, that's the problem. I have the same. Of course, I also want a, a 3D printer. Yeah. But oh, they get cheaper by the day, and they get bigger by the day. And it's like, just sitting on the fence waiting to buy a computer if you're waiting for the the better cheaper one you will never get into it and it's the same with the laser and a 3d printer but of course what i've learned from the i bought my cnc and of course i would like to have one that can take a full sheet of plywood yeah um but i don't have the workshop for that and (laughs) of course then you had the Shaper Origin, which is really nice, the handheld kit. And that has really no size limitation. But that came after I bought my CNC. And I don't like building it myself and doing the programming and so on. So I bought one that came like in a crate, plug and play. And of course, paid out of the nose for that. So 
I can't really sell it again and get my money back in to buy a Shaper Oregon. So I'm kind of stuck with it. So if I need to make parts that are bigger, I make them like a jigsaw puzzle where I print them out and then put them together and with glue. Fantastic. I mean, isn't that the thing for, for all of these uh, shop robots that you can either buy the, uh, the Tinkerer version that's cheap, but you have to put, a, put in a lot of hours to actually make it work, or you get the, the commercial grade that actually does what you think it will do, but then it costs you an arm and a leg. Yeah, and that's if I'm getting, or when I'm getting a laser, it's <laughs> it needs to be the size of my CNC because you can't see it, but it's uh, written here on a note uh, on top of my screen, the dimensions of the CNC. So when I'm designing, I'm always thinking of tweaking designs so they can fit into that uh, from a production perspective and getting a smaller <laughs> laser I, that would just fuck up with my way of thinking when I'm designing. So I, I need something that is just as big or bigger, but then it's a place <laughs> issue and they become kind of pricey. So, yeah. yeah. When you, when you go onto those, um, that, you know, the really fast, is it the CO2 lasers? They all seem to be in case. So that's got to be some sort of, you know, that's going to add size to the machine as well. If you go for that sort of laser, isn't it? Yeah. Well, not necessarily the cutting base for it. But they're not very n noisy. I have, I actually have a wind outlet in this room, which is perfectly placed for having a, a laser in the corner here. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's, I need some more traditional tools before I can do that investment. So it's it's one to two years ahead, I think, unless I win the lottery. Which I don't play very often, so it's uh, <laughs> it's not looking good. <laughs> so you recently got a table saw, KJ. Your yeah. chance to your chance to have a play with that yet? No, no. I actually don't. <laughs> I even I haven't even cleaned it off because it it was a used table saw and and yeah, it it needs it needs some love uh, with some yeah some acetone and some. Uh, cleaning products and some oil perhaps but i mean I, I i haven't really settled on where should i keep it i mean that's the problem with getting some some larger piece of kit i mean like a table saw or a laser or a cnc you have to rearrange your your workshop yeah. just to get in because uh, when i turned 40 my 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 parents gave me a bandsaw oh great nice <laughs> where should I put this? And I had to rearrange my entire workshop just to fit it in. So, I I mean, that's, that would be the big problem, uh, getting a, getting something big that then you have to rearrange it again and again and again. And I mean, the workshop is, is a limited space. So. And that's yeah. my issue as well. I, on top of my wish list is a bandsaw a bigger one, a proper floor standing version where I can actually resaw lumber so I can start making like bigger glue ups and so on. And then of course I need a planar thicknesser as well. And I want to, at the point when I'm buying it, I want to buy something that's uh, professional enough that I'll keep it, that it will be something that, well, my kids will have to clean out after I'm gone. Uh, but then we are over to the issue, as you mentioned, KJ, I don't have the space for it, basically. And if I should bring those two into my workshop, I need to sacrifice something. It's it's not even an issue about rearranging things. Then I need to actually get rid of something. And I can't really see. I'm using basically everything within a few months. I think I touched base on roughly most of my tools so that, that's a major issue i mean workshop space and i don't know how's that with you glenn i haven't seen your workshops but i feel you have the largest one at least the one with the electric uh, garage door opener which is a <laughs> posh lux luxury it does make me feel like i'm in the bat cave the uh, electric door i love that thing there was a, a freebie for one of my neighbors they were 
converting their garage into a playroom as I just started building the workshop. And they said, do you want this? Do you want, would you like the door? I said, that'd be fantastic. And literally finished the end of the workshop to fit the door. But it's uh, it's it's been fantastic. But size-wise, um, my workspace is five by three for the workshop part. I've actually built, there's another part that you never see on camera which the, the leads off the workshop, which is another two metres by five metres. And that was all the available space I've got to build on at my house without going upwards. But um, it seemed like a lot when I first finished it, which was only a year ago. And now I wished I'd got more space. <laughs> like, like you, I, I would love a, a bigger bandsaw. I'm just, just about to upgrade my bandsaw just because the other one's very old. And I can only go for a bench top one because I've just not got room for the floor standing. It needs to be put away at the end of every use. So, and yeah. That's a, well, that's a discussion I had. And then, of course, every maker dreams of a bigger workshop. And I think the I could probably utilize like a, a Zeppelin hanger. Uh, that would be no problem. But <laughs> I think the, the, the first threshold I would like to pass is where I can have several projects going on in parallel without having to pack everything down to do something else. Yeah. So, <laughs> but then the, then the problem comes that you have a lot of projects going in parallel and none of them gets finished. Uh, and the problem is, <laughs> is that you use up all, all the space just cluttering down with stuff that I uh, yeah, can do this later. I yeah, mean, well, I have um... I have two two big, uh, more or less kitchen tables as my work surfaces, and one is kept clean most of the time, and the other one is filled with projects that are ongoing. And then I have some shelves with pro pro projects that are ongoing. So but that that's why we we have YouTube because if I didn't have the incentive of finishing something to upload a video. I would be happy just tinkering with various projects without having a deadline because then it would be all about the process and there was no incentive of me to getting things done. And of course, it might lead to that I accumulate so much running project that I don't really get anything done. Of course, that's an issue. But I, I don't think I could work like that. I really like to focus on, on one project from start to finish. And give it my full attention. I don't think I could have several ones running at the same time. Drive me I nuts. think I have six started projects at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> and some of them has been there over a year. And that's, that's, I mean, it's, and it's not really good for my mental health go, getting down in the workshop and seeing, yep. Uh, hello, uh, Christmas tree foot. You are still staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you sleep at night. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, exhaustion. <laughs> I don't have... I think I have three active projects. And, and that's a nice number because I try to keep the costs down. So I order everything from AliExpress if I can. But sometimes the shipping times are kind of long so it's nice to have a couple of projects that when you're waiting for some parts then you can work on something else but then i also have a, a few projects that is tied up to christmas because i want to be done before christmas because i'm actually also trying to sell something that i'm planning to make and mm. i think that's a well-known problem for many makers that Christmas starts in July because then you have to think <laughs> of making and buying parts for the Christmas related projects that you want to make because you have to finish making them well ahead of Christmas because people start thinking about buying Christmas shit in September. So yeah, I'm yeah. already behind. And of course, yesterday I got a lot of parts from AliExpress, which I ordered in black and they came in bronze. Now, of course, I got accepted for a 
like my money back, but the shipment time is so long that I can't really buy new parts and have them here before Christmas. So now I have to go out and get some black uh, heat resistant spray paint and hope for a nice enough day for me to paint them. <laughs> so it's the added hassle. But How big is your workshop, Howard? It's uh, actually quite the same as Glenn's. Uh, I think it's uh, three meters times six. Mm. And I thought that I should maybe um, get an extension in the form of a shipping container. And they are uh, the 20 foot shipping containers are six meters long, but the width is two and a half meters. So it is almost the size of my workshop. It's just a bit more narrower. And of course, if you have the ones that are insulated, they become even more narrower. But yeah, if I could move all my woodworking equipment into a shipping container, uh, which I could strategically place uh, on our lot, that would help a lot, I think. Nice. But we talked about that... that in the first episode, I think. I also want to venture into more metalwork, so I should probably have a container only for metalwork as well, and then I can have all my electronic works and video making in uh, my original workshop. So uh, then it becomes a lot of shipping containers. In a <laughs> <laughs> you need you need another shipping container for your laser and your three D printer as well, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's true. So yeah. uh, see what so the family says about that. Three, yeah. three shipping containers so far. What are so any, anyone you? running a used <laughs> shipping container company, just hit me up. I'm uh, looking for a good deal. <laughs> you can uh, arrange uh, payment in. Uh, well, yeah, that's for an after show sometime, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Come on then, KJ. Do tell how big is yours? Yeah. I'm, I'm... <laughs> Surprisingly, uh, my my space is the biggest, um, <laughs> the I, I, tallest. Yeah, no, 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 I don't think it's tallest. But it's uh, uh, six by uh, three and a half meters, uh, but it's only two point two meters high on the on the tallest spot, and on the lowest spot, it's uh, it's shorter than I, than I am. So I have to <laughs> watch my head, and that's the that bloody garage door. <laughs> hanging down from the ceiling. <laughs> I had um, so actually... I, 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 I really would like more ceiling height, more than the floor space, actually. Yeah, that, that's the <laughs> same here. My my ceiling height is so low that there is impossible to get some proper overhead lighting going. And I actually mm -hmm. also removed the, the railings for the garage uh, gate opener because I was just hitting my head into it so i put that in a crate uh, for a later project sweet but then again i i also have i mean my home office is just one door away from the uh, from the workshop so i i treat that more or less as my clean clean workshop uh, nice. for uh, doing uh, fabric stuff and that sort of thing so that's an ad additional three and a half by five meters or something like that. Crikey. Uh, I do all, this. You've got all the space. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and do you need do you think you need more space on top of that or are you okay? Uh I wouldn't say no to more space. I mean and I think that's a common theme when you listen to to people, oh I only have 25 square meters. I need something bigger. Oh, I just built my shop uh, 120 square meters. I wish it yeah. was bigger. So <laughs> you always wish it was bigger. I mean just look at Lara Kampf. Yeah, you just you you fill your space with stuff. Well, her, hers is hers is not big enough. She's had to move to another country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was thinking um, the other day, if I had the the biggest, the most ultimate workshop, what would I build? And I think my builds would. I can't think beyond what I'm building at the moment, what I make at the moment. So I then I started to think, well, do I need a bigger workshop? Because. I don't. I honestly don't know what I would build if I had the big, the big, you know, dream workshop with all the tools. No. You guys thought about that? Do you know what you would do if you, all of a sudden, this big dream workshop landed in your lap? Well, yes and no. Um, I actually know how big 
or uh, how my dream workshop should be laid out and it's basically my grandfather's barn uh, okay it's not when i saw jimmy Doresta's barn build uh, it's not that big but it's a more traditional norwegian barn with two levels uh, and like a entry bridge on the top level and i think that would be perfect for dividing office space woodworking metalworking you could also have combined garage space and so on for if you want to tinker with your car or whatnot so that would be the dream uh, but project wise of course i would have a lot more projects going because i would have like different stations but i think i would maybe integrate them more like if i had a separate station for leather working and then i had some for metal working i would probably just use more of the elements into my projects like uh, for knife making then you would have metal work i would do the woodworking i would do the leather sheet and i think i would just add to the complexity of the projects i can't really see me venturing off into something different I would still have the same stupid ideas popping out <laughs> that I need to have an outlet for. What about you, KJ? I don't think... Space has never been the problem for me. I don't think I I would make anything bigger or more elaborate in that sense. I would just have more projects going at the same time and never finishing anything, I think. I mean, it, it, the, the only thing that's that's stopping me in, at the moment is time. Right. It's just 24 hours in a day is, is not enough for no. what I would like to do. So I, I, would, I would trade half my workspace for two more hours a day. <laughs> Easily. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the energy. I'm, I'm behind you on that one. Um, but that is a deadline for me to actually look into moving my workshop outside is i'm doing the same i have a combined home office with my wife which i also do for all the editing work and so on but that space will be occupied by a couple of teenagers within a few years so knowing that i, I need to plan for giving them that space because they have kind of a tiny like uh bedrooms which are not very good to like put furniture into stay for anything else and just sleeping in so that they need a room to actually stay. And of course, we also thought about making it into like a second living room for watching movies and so on. So then we should try to move the home office bit to somewhere else. How are the laws in, in Norway about building additional structures on your, uh, to your house? I mean, they are they are strict but it's doable i mean we are known for since since it's dark and rainy all year around we spend a lot of time uh, extending our houses and doing home renovation so there are a <laughs> lot of extensions going around but you have to apply and there are strict regulations for height and escape during fire and so on so uh, you have to apply well advanced and you should also be fairly decent at uh, doing contracting work yourself to actually do it so a lot of people yeah. just pay someone to do it that's where all the fun is building it yourself yeah i built my uh outdoor patio with a roof or whatever you call it but i made sure that it under the minimum size for having to apply for it yeah. and then you also have to notify all the neighbors and they have a grace period for objecting and then the the county or whatever needs to take that into account when they are handling your applications and so on so so my workshop if i should build something would automatically be larger than that and of course i would like to have at least water into the workshop and then you have to apply and then you have to have a registered plumber doing the plumbing work and so on uh, 
to actually get the permit for taking the building in use after it's built. So it's mm. it's a running, hassle. Running water into my workshop was never a consideration. <laughs> why, why, why would you need water in your workshop? What would you do with that? Well, it's cleaning brushes and then uh, washing your hands, washing your hands, and so on. Uh, it's uh... I've got a whole house to do that sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but some yeah. stuff you don't want to draw into the house. Uh, if all goes well, my next build with you will heavily have wa uh, water themed. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I can hear. And so yeah, I, I'm uh, I'm very much for having having water in the workshop. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But then, uh, of course, you need a drain, uh, and then your floor can't really be even, and that's a hassle. Uh, not to have an even floor, uh, so swings and roundabouts, like roundabouts, I guess. That, that's a fun thing about my workshop. It's it's basically a, a '60s garage, and they have a drain in the middle of the floor. Oh wow! And I think the it's the same people who also did uh, our oldest bathroom because their the inclination on the floor is a lot larger than the building code dictates so you feel like your one leg is shorter than the other so <laughs> having anything level in my workshop was not possible so that's also why the the inner one third of my workshop i i build a raised roof which i leveled off and since i don't have underfloor heating and it's not very well insulated in the winter time i also put carpet on top of that uh, going a bit british but it's a really nice corner. I like sitting there, uh, like bare feet in the winter and just <laughs> soldering electronics and so on. But then again, having a carpeted area in the same workshop that you do woodworking, it's less than ideal. So yeah, at least I've got a carpet in my workshop. Yeah, yeah. half of, of my store is carpet as well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I have to go into my into my uh, the clean part. If I actually want a level floor, you can see that in the the, the video where I made the the kid kids bunk 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 bed, uh, that I had to build it in a really tiny area because I needed a flat floor, <laughs> and that was a no go in the in the workshop because of the drain in the middle. But that drain has actually saved me twice now where I where the work, workshop got flooded from the outside. Yeah, uh, so I'm glad it's there. So we have a. A listener that um, keeps coming up with nice suggestions for us. A lady called Sophia. I can't remember her surname, but she keeps coming up with these great suggestions. And um, the latest one is I, last week I suggested we have a, a knife off. And uh, Sophia has suggested that we have a knife along. Now, it's not something I can start at the moment, but maybe for the future we could do the knife along and uh, build a knife and share our progress as we go through and maybe some of the listeners might like to join along with that what do you guys reckon yeah that would be it would be kind of nice because i i've considered making a knife for a long time now but it's always been bumped down on the project list because i, I haven't really had a reason or a good idea but it would be nice to perhaps force an idea just to see, to have something to share and see how, if we come up with some, so, some sort of general specification and see how we interpret it differently and what will come out of it, filtered yeah. through, through our individual brains. <laughs> and then on the subject of um, interpretation, does a guillotine count as a knife? I'm, I'm not quite sure that it does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll do I would that say separately. blade and handle for a knife, and yeah. that uh, guillotine mechanism is not really a handle, is it? Yeah. Okay. I agree. But we could have a guillotine off as well. <laughs> <laughs> or Following a guillotine the... along. <laughs> <laughs> That's for the the French themed uh, project collaboration. Yeah, I think I think it's <laughs> I th funny that it's called. We're gonna we maybe call this a knife along, which suggests just a nice friendly. Let's share 
results, but we all know it's going to ten- end up being a competition, don't we? <laughs> but I, th- I think Fred. it would be nice to have a project that can stretch over a few weeks that could also be like a topic where we can discuss it along the way. And yeah. I'm, I've seen your projects in previous videos and although it might be a competitive element there, I think we'll all going in vastly different directions. So I don't think it's going to be a competition in that sense. I'm sure we could get a judge in there too. See who's the best. <laughs> well, I'm not the one having an axe hanging hidden behind paintings in all the rooms of my house. <laughs> We've only got your word for that, though. Yeah, and of course, <laughs> it's it's in my home office desk. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if it's any better having a meat cleaver readily accessible, but yeah, that's that's for the guillotine project. <laughs> just to give everybody a visual, there, Havard just pulled a meat cleaver out of his desk drawer. <laughs> Makes you wonder what else he has out of out of frame. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's why I have a fixed camera, <laughs> not the ones that follow you around. <laughs> Oh, it's it's very family friendly. It's, I've got uh, the Mona Lisa behind me with a rocket launcher in her hand, but <laughs> ah, it's a, I, I've only seen the Mona Lisa part, and it's something else. But you you're mostly covering it when you're, yeah. when you're sitting straight up. So yeah, interesting. What's that loaded with? Is some kind of arrow, a harpoon, or oh, it's a it's a rocket. It's a rocket launcher. Ah, yeah. It's the Mona Lisa with it's a it's a Banksy. Ah, but mo- most people. Come in the workshop and actually think the Mona Lisa is my wife. <laughs> they look, they look a little similar. <laughs> well, I'd be very pleased if I just arrived to my workshop one day and actually realized that Banksy has done something on my wall. <laughs> that would be priceless. <laughs> well, it's, it's Banksy via Etsy. <laughs> <laughs> it would have to be a rather small Banksy to fit on any of my walls. But that I being guess the, said, the ceiling is uh, is free, I guess. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that being said, Banksy could have put paintings out on Etsy under a pseudonym or something, just as a gag. So you'll never yeah. know. <laughs> if uh, if either of you guys want a Banksy on your walls, I've still got the stencil for that. I'll send it to you if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> Bought yeah. that for the workshop I think I'll before make, it's even uh, finished. Yeah, then I I haven't made a stencil before, so maybe then I could make you a hell quarter stencil. You need a hell quarter on your wall there. <laughs> mm, I'll I'll have a think about that one. <laughs> <laughs> or else I I'll think... talk to your wife and we'll fix it one day <laughs> yeah, out of, out enough. of yeah, work. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you're going to start making stencils, you're going to need that laser. Yeah. yeah, I think that if I got a laser, I would be making stencils left, right, and center. I think. Because when I need one now, I just print it out and, and sit with a exacto knife for far too long and get a crappy result. Yeah. So, yeah. We, we On the Friday night, me and my wife came in here and uh, lasered a rubber stamp. We got some mm-hmm. laserable rubber and that worked out pretty cool. Nice. Yeah, nice cool. thing to do. Nice safe thing to do while you're having a glass of wine. Just watch the laser run. <laughs> <laughs> I, we don't need the safety goggles or the safety. <laughs> It'll be fine. Do you, are you supposed to have safety goggles? <laughs> you says squinting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've just realized I'm squinting because I've not got my glasses on. <laughs> well, it's understandable considering what you have to look at. <laughs> so you have that laser with the lid and everything. So it's a decent size line. It's, it's, mine hasn't got a lid actually. No, okay. I've, no. When I use mine, I um, I have to have the garage door open. Yeah, garage otherwise door it, open and the safety it, squint. Yeah, otherwise it tries to kill you with the fumes. <laughs> They're absolutely horrendous, honestly. You start you start engraving or cutting wood or acrylic, and it just fills the room with fumes. They're so so dangerous if you if you've not got the ventilation. You, you're yeah, I mean, mad. Cut, <laughs> burning wood. I mean, it is burning. I mean, yes. burning wood is 
is is not that bad, but burning plastic at that rate, yeah, that's really <laughs> not <It's> not good. <laughs> Oh yeah. No. I've had some fun Sunday afternoons with a bottle of wine and laser cuts doing some slow projects on the laser for five hours. <laughs> the fumes <laughs> and the wine, it's quite a heady mixture at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I made some um I made some Christmas tree ornaments last year and I had uh, a guy laser them for me. And of course it I used uh, Star Wars themed designs and I was really pleased with the designs but Disney as uh, owner of the IPR rights. Uh, I was thinking selling them on Etsy, but mm, they have a a nice set of lawyers that just randomly <laughs> rampaged internet to find people who are infringing on their copyrights. So I thought I'd maybe let that project go. <laughs> I think they have some search spiders as well looking around for... yeah. Baby Jodas and that sort of thing. But that given, I, I saw this uh, documentary, I think the guy who designed the helmet for the stormtroopers and also the guy who did the helmet for Darth Vader, That's it's something about it being a helmet and something that, that you can use. And he was not in the United States. So it, it's. I think it was a British court that actually deemed that he had the license to or the right for the design because he was making them and selling them as props because he was a prop maker and he was mm. selling them to people going to conventions and so on and of course uh, Star or not Star Wars but uh, Lucas Arts and Disney didn't really like that so they sued him but he actually got the rights to do what he want with the design outside of the United States, of course, so he can't sell to the United States. It's so, nice to see a small guy get a win, isn't it? Yeah. So I did think about it. If I don't use the Star Wars name, so I call them a Christmas trooper and a, a <laughs> Dar- Darth Santa and a Christmas star. Uh, and then I could get away with it because the designs were basically not theirs to begin with outside the united states but then of course i i should ask the guy with the the proper design rights but then again it's an artistic rendering they are not like copies or anything but it's very obvious where i got the design inspiration from so it's a, it's a gray area there and i like i like paying respects to artists for their design either buying the license to use it if i need it or at least asking them if it's okay if i do this and if they say no and i say that's okay then i won't do it because i would like someone to pay me that respect if somebody came and wanted to copy something of me i would most likely say yes that's an honor but of course being asked is the clue i guess (laughs) i'm just making sure the helicord is hidden out of view of the camera (laughs) <laughs> oh that would be great if we had a community of people building their own that would be then we can have conventions and swap meets and i mean this this could be huge i think it would be really cool to see people uh, do a take on your projects on my projects i think it'd be really awesome to see that i'd love to see somebody do a version of my strum stick and your helicorder and just see what people come up with i think would be great i really want to do a strum stick at some point but i realize a lot of people have done it and much better than i would probably do so i need to find a hilarious take on it so it's it's going to be an exceptional strum stick (laughs) there are there's certainly not many electric ones out there i think i've cornered the market on those (laughs) I mean, you were talking about uh, Nerf projects before, so maybe a Nerf gun strong stick. <laughs> you know, I did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> After that episode, I actually did some Googling uh, because I had some ideas, but since it is such a big niche on YouTube, someone has already done it because I was looking into, okay, if I can't fire the most nerfs uh, in a short period of time, 
maybe I should big build the biggest one or a rocket kind of type. And then, of course, Joel Creates have the small ones that are self-propelled. And I was thinking I have some rocket fuel ingredients, so maybe I should build a proper rocket launch Nerf because there are a lot of Nerf rocket launchers out there, but they're using pressurized air mostly, so it should be a proper rocket. But then we have the same issue. I, I really don't have any place nearby to fire it. You don't have the Nevada desert. <laughs> no. Um, and of course, I could go to my mother's cabin or something, but it's like, that's an eight hour drive. So it's, it's a it's a bit much to fire something and realize, oh, it didn't work. I need to go back to the workshop then. Oh, <laughs> Head back for eight hours. <laughs> I was just about to offer you, you know, you could always bring something over here. I've, I've got access to a bit of land, but uh, that's <laughs> a, a little bit further and getting the fuel over here might be a bit of an issue. <laughs> yeah. It I mean, would be really fun to have the, the Norwegian space program just with you firing <laughs> a, a huge Nerf dart over the fjords. <laughs> Uh, that being said, we have a Norwegian space agency, and then probably it should be possible to get a hold of one of these guys. And then, can I use your facilities? <laughs> <laughs> or, to fight a huge nerf? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't need any of your technical installations. I I just need the the area inside the fence so no one gets hurt. <laughs> you can even put your logo on it if you want to. <laughs> do you think we're getting ready for a wrap up boys feels like it yeah yeah so is there, the... anybody, is there anybody we need to thank or mention this week I think we probably are a few people yeah I would say a, a general thank you to, to everyone who has commented and, commented and sent us a message or shared something about the podcast if I at least feel really, really welcomed and feel loved, more or less. Yeah, uh, definitely. And as and a special thank you to to Andy and Jamie for having us on. Make us waffle. M- makes you feel like a like a big boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> nice to play like with uh, some proper players. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have a, a couple of episodes, and uh, definitely a couple of hours until we're at their level. That's only another 108, isn't it, to go? 109 episodes before we're up to their level? Yeah, yeah I'm counting, thinking on the f- counting numbers. But <laughs> yeah. if we go by the hour, oh, gosh, yeah. take it times three at least. <laughs> but that's like with any age difference. I mean, if you, if you just let it play out for a while, then the difference kind of become in- insignificant. So you mean we'll take them in the long run? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not a competition, but uh, it would be nice to uh, get to that level where you uh, are professional yet relaxed. That's uh, That must be a goal, <laughs> I think. Okay, let's wrap up. Where can people find us? <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> number one crude mistakes on every platform that we care about. Yeah. That'll and I mean, right. if you if you are hearing this, then the obvious answer would be here. And then, <laughs> of course, <laughs> anything labeled number one crude mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. And check uh, check out the, I mean, the, the Instagram account and the web page is the best place to go when if you want to know more and communicate with us. Oh, well, one last thing, actually. I'm wanting to upgrade my bandsaw. If anybody's got any good uh, good suggestions for a, a benchtop bandsaw, please let me know. <laughs> I'd love to know what people have got to say on that. I'm edging towards the Matibo at the moment. I have the Matibo, actually, yeah. the, the benchtop model, yeah. Oh, I'll get a different one then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get the one I have, at least. That's the only recommendation I have. Fantastic. (laughs) Bye. Have a good one. Bye bye. So, welcome to the after show.